Welcome to Black Femme Fashion News. I'm your host, Shanice. I am here with a special report. Yesterday, Tuesday, I recorded the news report, the newscast for the week at like 8 a.m. By early that afternoon, some of the most rattling, unexpected, heartbreaking announcements had was, was made early that afternoon, just completely wiped the rest of the day for fashion news. Megastar stylist, image architect, um, one of the most prolific black voices in fashion in this current day and age, La Roach has announced his retirement. Things hit the fan so swiftly. In the Instagram posts where La announced his retirement, the caption states, and I quote, my cup is empty. Thank you to everyone who, su- who supported me and my career over the years. Every person that trusted me with their image, I'm so grateful for you all. If this business was just about the clothes, I would do it for the rest of my life, but fortunately, it's not. The politics, the lies, false narratives finally got me. You win, I'm out, end quote. First things first, I am not a gossip blog. This is not a gossip channel. Never has been, never will be. A lot of the reaction coming out of this was more of the false narratives that he literally said is part of the reason why he's done, you know? So there have been rumors flying left, right, front, and center on Twitter. Let's let's begin with last week. So last week, a video went viral um, where La, La Roach and longtime friend and client Zendaya um, were arrived to the Louis Vuitton Women's Wear fashion show at Paris Fashion Week. They arrived, the day I sat, there was no seats next to her and presumably none left in the front row. I'm not quite sure because again, we, we have a phone camera here. Um, and uh, Law's looking around, you can see the con- confusion. And um, that caused a bunch of controversy. I hate saying controversy. People were just talking. Not everything's controversy when people start talking about things. But people were talking um, because instead of sitting behind Zendaya in the second row, Law choose, chose to leave. There were varied opinions. You know, that's what social media is. It's a bunch of opinions. People were saying everything from um, <sighs> calling out Law's ego, um, debating whether or not he deserved a front row seat, um, debating whether or not it was childish of him to leave, um, debating whether or not it was a direct slight against the opinion of the stylist. Um, and mind you, this time last week, Law had styled Zendaya in four different looks, I believe. Because again, we're in the beginning stages of the award season. The award season is just starting to really, you know, get going. So he had Zendaya and other clients in multiple looks. He's been working this past week. Okay, come this past Sunday night. This past Sunday night was the Oscars and the after party. You know, the after party fashion, you know. Multiple clients, again. The biggest moment being my girl, Megan Thee Stallion. She attended the Vanity Fair after party. Um, This is her first official appearance post all the... Y'all know. If you're on this channel, y'all already know, but... Post all that. This is our first official appearance. Um, Law posted as such. An Instagram post made Monday morning after the Oscars and the after party. And I quote, and just like that, she's back. Call her no waste Meg. Like, he was working. So that was Monday morning. Like I said, Tuesday afternoon. I think sometime in the 1 o'clock East Coast hour. Um, we get retired. Just, that's just it. That's just it with the note that I read, with the caption I read you already. Um, a lot of people were having like just visceral reactions. Myself included. The first thing I said was OMG wait, you know? Law is only 44. I don't even know where to begin in this reaction, this explanation of what's going on because there's so many working pieces here. Law Roach, again, image architect. He's trademarked the, the saying. It's his actually. Mega stylist, the most visible and popular well-known stylist in the game to date really and he is a black gay man that's highly opinionated that charges his worth and that inspires 
a lot of people's work. You know, black creativity, nothing really moves like black creativity. You know, people like to take it and bastardize it to the point where when you try to point out that it's black creativity that caused that thing, they'll get it up in arms and don't know that's where it came from. Um, st- Law is one of those references for a lot of these other stylists, a lot of these fashion houses. Law is that reference, you know? Law, who's from Chicago, who's not afraid to tell you he got it out the mud, that he worked for everything he got. You can't talk to me any kind of way. You can't treat me any kind of way. You know, you, I'm coming in and I'm, I'm commanding a certain amount of respect. You, if, you, if you're not giving me that, we're going to have a problem. Like, I, I'm not really afraid of this, this industry because I'm black. I'm from the hood. I can always go back. Like, I'll always make money. I'll mm-hmm. always get money. I'll always be successful. And if I have to get into a situation where I have to rework who I am and what I'm doing, then I'm not afraid of that, right? Mm-hmm. So I'm not afraid to st- go toe to toe with a publicist or agent or a manager because I don't feel like I need you because you didn't, you've never done mm-hmm. to me anyway. Mm-hmm. I'm self-made. You know what I mean? Like I built my career. You know, I didn't go the conventional routes that everybody go and you know, this person, you owe this person a favor. I owe nobody in this industry. I did it all myself. You have to research and learn constantly and, and, and devote yourself to this and to, you know, just have the backbone it takes to be able to ask and, and get and find these things that you need to create these visions that you have in your head, to create these pieces of art, these images that law is so revered for creating. Styling is hard. And I want people to really think about law's lane here. Law, especially with Zendaya, law has made pulling archival vintage fashion to be worn in big public spots like red carpets, him and Zendaya have made that so popular. It's such a mainstay, you know? Like, pulling archival fashion is not easy. Doing the research for it first off and foremost, to find out what's in these different designers and houses' archives, that's hard enough. But to think about the archive pieces that he's been able to pull, the access, the respect, the, the places he had to go and make himself known to be able to pull some of the absolute most gorgeous 20 plus year old pieces that Law has pulled for Zendaya, you can't be just anybody and do that. You can't. So with that, mind you, this means that he is a prolific stylist. He's a megastar stylist a black gay man who is traversing the very elitist, classist, racist levels of high fashion. He is traversing high fashion, you know, and he's talked about in interviews the macro microaggressions he's encountered traversing these spaces. I have experienced subtle things, right? I've experienced um, walking, walking into a room and um, being the only black person there and people automatically assuming that my white assistant is me. Like, walk to her to greet her as me. He's traversing this mess, which we all know is a mess because it's, it's always been nothing but and is to this very day and who knows how long it'll continue to be. While also being like social media fodder, really, a lot of this reaction to his announcement of retirement is focusing on what we'll no longer be able to get from him. And it's not focusing in on my cup is empty. No one's thinking about, you know, how hard it is to be black in fashion at his level. Too many of the reactions is just focusing on, oh, no more law, oh, but we, but this and that, and oh, but he gave us this, we need to give us some more, I don't know. And honestly, yes, I am too just like, damn, like, a red carpet, an award season, just fashion without law, oh my God, I am too. But the man who is behind the La Roche persona, you know, the one who loves fashion, the one who used to write his bulletin, his Lux in the City bulletin, and just gush about how, um, you know, happy and how in love and how involved he is with the whole process and how it just, it just fills him up. And the more I sat with this announcement, the more I watched the replies and the out-of-pocket theories. First off, if anyone is really sitting here and trying to make it seem like, oh, he's only retiring or 
oh, he's retiring over that seat. He really, his ego so big that he that he's retiring because he didn't sit for a row. Arr. Don't curse. Don't curse. Don't curse. Whether that was the straw that broke the camel's back or not, completely skipping over everything he talked about in interviews, both sit down and written, about all the things that he's faced and all the pressure that he's had, you know, Law has talked at length about how important it is to him to work with their merchant girls, to work with their merchant designers, to open the doors, kick down doors and leave them wide open for black stylists that are coming up behind him. Law has talked for years about how important all that work is to him and how maintaining his image um, is really trying to protect that work that he's doing, you know, for us, for this community, for what we do here at Black Film Fashion News, you know? When I sat and really thought about it, there have been a bunch of people who are also Black in fashion across different, you know, um, paths and, and career titles that have had the same type of sentiment in recent times. I mean, within the past two weeks, there have been a bunch of people who are Black in fashion who have talked about how nasty and gritty the industry is and how they just really crawled back into themselves and how they just come get their work done and, and get because it's like there's nothing else to, to do but to be like undermined or discredited. Um, there's pe There's been people talking about how they're taking their transferable skill skills that they've taken from their career in fashion and moving them outside. Law doing this for whatever reason at his low visibility and his fame, a lot of people went, I understand. I get it. I get it, I know. Because they're already living this, they've already moved away from it, or they are seeing so many people doing it and like, yeah, I know, you don't even have to tell me, I already know. And of course, I want to continue to see the image architect do his thing, but I'm so much more concerned about Law Roach, the man, you know, the man who loves his house, the man who loves ballroom, the man who loves to be comfy cozy, you know, the man who loves his nieces and talks to them every other day, you know, like, I'd much rather, I'm not as concerned about what we're no longer going to get um, more than how we're treating our legends, you know? I, I really want us to really sit, really sit and think about how we're treating our icons, our legends in real time. And this is, this is an opportunity, this is a moment to hear, listen, and send love. I, ugh, I send love to Law from the bottom of my heart, really really do i used to so much enjoy reading his lux in the city bulletin it, you could just feel the love for his craft feel his excitement feel his love to like share with us people who actually like you know support and and, and also create you know and now we may never see him create in the fashion world as a stylist at least because at the end of the day law gonna get his bag somehow or another he's told y'all that too okay let's take care of our legends how about that let's be supportive of our legends let's be understanding let's not have to come back 15 years from now and talk about how we failed law roach i just I, I don't want that. And that was it for today's special report, our first ever special report, and it's the most heartbreaking shit. Wow, okay. Um, until next time, stay stylish, y'all. <laughs>